Hi guys, welcome along. Today we're going to learn how to paint a lovely dried poppy seed head. I really love how dried foliage and flowers are becoming really popular in arrangements and the beautiful thing is, is they will stay the same all year round. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay, let's go. We've got these amazing dried poppy seed heads and you can see from their angle there, they have the most incredible central uh, flower shape almost. Anyway, so today I'm gonna, we've got one for you and one for me to have a close look at when I'm off camera. Okay, so we need some color mixed up first and the yellow ochre is going to be quite an important player in this. This is gonna probably be our base color. And then we're going to use up all the lovely bits of shadowy dregs in our palette too. Um, I am hoping if you have been painting along quite a lot that you too will have a palette that starts to have lots of exciting little bits of colour in it that sort of mix up as you paint various different projects and then present you with some rather wonderful shadowy mixes all along the way. So today I'm just going to go straight in, um, I'm not even going to bother with the pencil because I think we can do this, we can do this without. So I'm going to start off with my yellow ochre and I'm going, to, I'm going to paint two I think today. We've got a sort of slightly wobbly stem and I'm going to paint two lines the second I'm hoping there will be elements of unpainted space and then almost immediately I'm going to drop in a bit of shadow mix and then we can see at the top it sort of stops like that and if I pick up a little bit more a little bit more of a brown colour got a little sort of colory cap and then the neck of our poppy seed head which then goes up into creating the actual head of our poppy seed and it feels like I'm moving quite fast doesn't it and that is because the nature of this plant or dried plant is allowing me to be quite sort of loose and fast with my painting style because there are so many sort of very subtle textures going on in here that really lend themselves to a nice subtle blend. So whilst that dries, let's do another one. So I've got my yellow ochre and we'll have a slightly taller one this time. And I'm using my size 2 brush, enjoying the slight wobble and then doing a second line. I think I have a bit of fluff on my brush. And a bit of shadow. Not sort of overworking it. And this is all working nicely because I'm doing it fairly fast and it's fairly wet. Okay, then we've got this little collar. A little bit of unpainted space and then we let that just blend down and then we have the neck. And then to create my head of my poppy seed, I'm gonna use this larger size eight brush, two C curves, and then filled in, in the middle. And then I'm going to get back to my size two because you just want a little bit more control. With getting those bits of shaping and just getting the sort of bit of the neck going. Okay, that's looking really nice. So we've got these two drying as we just look down the rest of the seed head um, and there are sort of a few ridges 
on that poppy seed there on the stem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a smaller brush, I've got a size 3 tenths, and a bit of burnt sienna. But I'm, st I'm not going to sort of go in full on burnt sienna, just a li very little bit. And I'm just, whilst this is still a little bit damp, going to use the fine point of the size 3 brush to add a little bit of ridging detail. Let's do that again on the other one. So we can see it was still a little bit wet, which is perfect because we get then the line blending in just a little bit, but maintaining a little bit of its definition. And what's really nice is it sort of dry brushes out towards the bottom. I'm a big fan of dried flowers and foliage. Um, they have definitely become a huge presence in wedding flowers, um, which is amazing, really. Because I think for a while we all thought they were a very dated notion. Um, but I just love the colours. I think they're so beautiful. And also that they're never going to... Well, they're going to stay like this for uh, a very long time, which is very, very cool. Imagine having your wedding bouquet just like staying the same for forever, rather than having to dry it out. Anyway, let's have a little look at getting a bit more detail in that collar there. So a bit of burnt sienna just with the in with the shadow there. I'm just going to add a little bit more depth, but that's still quite wet, so we're going to leave that. Let's have a look at these seed heads. We need to add in our lovely crown, which is uh, absolutely beautiful kind of shape. It's so funny because it almost looks like there's a slight sort of purple colour in there. So what I've got here is a mixture of Prussian blue and then a little bit of permanent rose and, and cadmium red. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab in a little bit at the top. And even though it's still blending out and going wet, it will just help give us that little bit of extra detail. And now I've got a slightly more concentrated amount of a yellow ochre. And I'm going to start there we go. doing like a first set of sort of plumes of my seed head. So starting with the tip of the brush and then fanning it out like so. Okay, now the one other thing we can do whilst we are still in a sort of semi-damp state with these, the main sort of pod of the seeds, is you can see these sort of ridges up the sides of the seed head and I'm going to just paint in some wet, very dilute C curves that just give us that little bit more of the texture. Now this one still looks fairly wet so I'm going to let this dry a little bit further and then we'll come back and add in some detail. These are looking nice and dry now and I added in just a little bit more of the lines just like that one there. So the next thing we can look at is getting a bit more detail in there. So if I have a closer look at this I'm going to start first with that little collar just move that to one side. There we are. We'll pop it down so we can see it like that. There we go. So let's get a little bit of the burnt sienna, a little bit of French ultramarine. So this is where my paintings sort of turn into the, the new botanical style 
that I talk about quite a lot, where we've started with a fairly loose, expressive painting, and then I love to take it to the next level by adding in still a fairly sort of loose approach with the detail, but watercolour is all about layering. So that's why shadow plays such a big role in my paintings. So I've got a bit of French ultramarine in with the yellow ochre there. And now I'm going to just do the tiniest bit there. And now we can add a tiny bit more, just a tiny bit mind. So if I paint that line in, then I can blend it. So we're not getting too much detail, but we are getting a little bit. And you'll see that it will dry and soften even further. It's almost like this painting process is you do all the steps with on a fairly wet surface and then you wait for it to dry and do all those steps again on a fairly dry surface. That looks really nice. And now I want to get a little bit more shadow mixed up. little bit from the bottom. Blend that down. There, it's really starting to start to sort of form a lovely round shape and sit up off the page. Now let's have a look towards the top. I was talking about that purple colour earlier. And we can still do with a bit of it. So it was just all sitting in between the ridges at the top there. So I start off by painting in sort of the dabs at the top and then I'm going to blend them down. So do that again, so paint in where they sort of sit up with that little gap in between. and then clean that brush off nice we're very nearly there the last thing I'm going to do is on each sort of it's funny they look sort of almost like feathers from underneath what I want to try and achieve is the idea that these little fronds at the top have a central line 
of the lighter ochre and the rest of them is this darker colour. So I am going to paint a faint sort of shadow up the side of them, leaving an unpainted bit of yellow. Let's try that again here, so leaving that central stripe. really nice so what we'll do is we'll leave this to dry once more and then come back and have one last look see if there's anything more we can do so I finished this one here and now I'll do it for you right here so first things first another layer of slightly more concentrated purpley shadow detail will just help really define those little undersides of the, I want to call them feathers, but they're not feathers, are they? Um, and then even more under here, and then just move that out of the way so you can see. And to create a little bit more detail down the stem, I'm just using more of the side of the bristles of my brush to make a slightly broader line with the burnt sienna just there. And then I looked a bit more closely at the seed pods and there are some lovely kind of blobs and sort of blemishes on them. So I'll do a few dots and then go back with a clean white, uh, clean wet brush just to blend them in a bit. Make them look a little less like I've just dotted blobs on top. And there you have two dried poppy seed heads. And can you hear this? They double up as mini maracas as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'm hoping to add a few more dried bits and pieces to that poppy seed and we can make a lovely arrangement fairly soon. So I want to say a big thank you to all my patrons for their support. Um, your support enables me to create videos just like this one that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed the video then hit the like button and comment below of course to let me know how you're getting on. And if you subscribe you'll never miss another video. Okay. Bye.